We've got some nice sized sand crabs. During a high tide, you get some nice big ones. A lot of eggs are starting to pop up. A lot of them are soft, like this one here. See the, see the luminescence of the legs like that? That means it's soft. That means it's soft. See that? Yeah. That's a soft shell crab there. This is soft shell. It's a soft shell with eggs. Double bonus. I get about 20 of them, that'll be good enough to get started. You can take 50 of these things at any one time. Semi soft with eggs, as I normally do it. Um, around the back side and then up through, up through the part that they like to bite into, which is the eggs right there. Okay, pop that hook right through there. And that's almost a surefire hit right there. Because if it's a small fish, it'll most likely bite right there. The bigger fish, well, those eggs are visible. Here's a soft shell without eggs. Let's put this one on there. This is super soft, this one. Okay. Now the disadvantage of the super soft eggs, I mean the super soft uh, sand crabs, look at that. I guess that's their blood, I'm not sure. Well, yeah, the disadvantage is that they fall off easier. But that is yummy. Just reeled this one in after a couple of what seemed like silver perch bites, and sure enough, look at that. See where the eggs were? Somebody bit most of those eggs out of there. Something small, something small. This one here is completely gone. It's hard to say what, what happened to that. That was that really super soft uh, sand crab there. You can see just a little bit of it left on the hook. But see that? See how they bite down there and get those eggs? They love those eggs. And in about a month or two, the eggs will be in high season. That's when the striper and the perch are just everywhere. When, right now I'd say from just my small survey of the sand crabs there, maybe 10%, 15% had the, the eggs of the ones that I saw today, the couple hundred that I saw out there. Um, but when we come July, August, you'll be able to wait till you see the photography that I take. You'll just see the orange all over the sand. Beautiful. Let's reload here. Oh, and I just realized why I was getting so hot. I forgot to take off my waders. Best way to hook these. This one works for me. Okay. Now you want to end up with the eggs on the top, like that. Okay. These little puppies right here. So, but you want to hook it twice because it'll it'll hold on better that way. So, start by going through this way. And then you flip this back on itself right to where the point is. See that? Right into the eggs. Boom. That's nice. That's your good fish. There's an alternative way of um, hooking them Putting the uh, the hook right there where they like to bite. See the eggs right there? And you see this thing right here that covers the eggs? If you do it right, see that? If you do it right, you can put the hook right through this, um, this abdominal flap, uh, telson, whatever you want to call it, and it'll expose the eggs even more. You can see some of the eggs here have fallen out on this one here. It was out there for about 15 minutes. You can see the other one. There's the other one. You can see that. Nice shot at the eggs there. Right? The hook goes right through the telson. All right, getting some kind of a bite. Feels like a small perk. What I did is I, um, I raised the hook up a little higher.
all I did was raise the sand crab. Maybe they just showed up. You know, there's a million factors involved when they're fishing. Uh, but anyways, uh, there we go. There's the first fish of the day. That's enough for dinner. It's good enough. Nice, clean fish. No parasites. Good to go. I find if you grab them, like right in that area the, where the heart is, you press real hard. They won't move. See like that? See, this guy's not moving. You gotta bleed them out. Throw them in the bucket. Yeah, that's a nice one right there. Doesn't appear to be uh, birthing or pregnant or anything like that. Yeah. Let's keep it. when it gets a little rugged if I raise it a little bit far farther off the bottom like I did here because you got the standard leader and if you put the weight right here you can see that one hook is real close to the bottom and when it's real busy like this the sand is all over the place and sand floats downward so if you bring it up towards the top a little with a little bit of leader like that there you go about two and a half feet a liter torpedo weight for better casting i got two different types of hooks on here this is a two odd here it's a bait holder it's got the barbs on the back there and uh this one here this one works this is the one i caught it on actually um works really good for sand crabs these uh ones here they look like a big u shape kind of bent over like that nice hook for surf perch fish So as I was pulling out of Great Well Cove, a lady flagged me down and uh, she needed a jump. And um, I got these extra long jump cables. Uh, she had pulled in head first and she was wondering how anyone was gonna be able to jump her because uh, she was thinking maybe she had to back her car, you know, pull her car out of the parking space. But I got these extra long jump cables and they're made so that like you can back up to somebody's car or you can pull up to someone's car from the rear of it and the cables will still make it all the way there and they did just that and it was great the weird thing is i went to barbara's fish trap right after that and got me some of that fried fish here that i love so much it was delish and i was sitting in the car listening to my radio 
and um, my battery went dead. The first guy I flagged down, Karma, Karma baby, yeah, gave me a jump, put me on my way. It pays out to help other people. It's amazing that it happened like, you know, just so close to each other like that. So, something I wasn't expecting.